The Chicago Bar Association was created back in 1874 as just a general resource to help attorneys network with each other and be successful in their practices. The CBA chose to set up the insurance subsidiary uh, because a lot of the members were asking questions about what types of insurance uh, they should tap into, who's the best resource for legal malpractice insurance, life insurance, health insurance, et cetera, et cetera. And rather than sending those elsewhere, we figured we'd be a better resource if we just kept it all in-house and they had a, a, a familiar face to work with on a regular basis. And we think that it's very important to get the word out and let our members know that we're around to help as a resource. On top of that, we can work with any uh, law firm or any attorney in, in the United States. When a law firm comes to us for a second opinion on their legal malpractice insurance policy, we're usually able to find them a lower price for the same coverage or better coverage, or in some instances, actually both. We can find a lower price for better coverage, which is obviously the end goal. Insurance is something that not a lot of people know the ins and outs of it, and maybe a smaller firm or a solo attorney needs that consultant to really keep them in line or to provide information to take it off of their plate. They have enough going on dealing with clients, collecting bills, doing everything that makes them successful in their profession. What I'm here to do is to, to be a resource uh, and, and really just, just provide assistance in something that they are not inherently an expert in. I'm Mike L. Karaki, and I'm an attorney and a member of the Chicago Bar Association. I'm a plaintiff's attorney at, at uh, Leahy and Hosty, where I practice personal injury, medical malpractice, and wrongful death. Um, on today's show, Viewed in the Law, we're going to explore um, Chicago Animal Care and Control and its community partners, um, including uh, Safe Humane, and how their missions overlap to uh, create uh, a better environment for the placement of animals and the relationship of animals with uh, people in the city. And we're lucky to have with us two great guests. We have Kelly Gandersky to my right, who is an attorney and the executive director and general counsel of Chicago Animal Care and Control uh, since being appointed by the mayor in 2018. Congratulations. And Dr. Cynthia Bathurst, who is the co-founder and CEO of Safe Humane Chicago. Uh, which is a uh, 501c3 organization that addresses a number of social challenges through programs centered on promoting uh, positive relationships between people and animals. Um, welcome to the show. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Um, I gave a little bit of a background uh, for each of you, but um, there's you know probably a lot to say. Uh, what got you to where you are now, and and um, you know uh, um, in terms of uh, your roles and, and, the, and the topics we're going to be discussing today. So Kelly, why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Sure. So I was a practicing attorney, much like yourself, um, also a member of the CBA, and I've always had a passion for animals. Um, I was involved with Chicago Animal Care and Control as a volunteer when I was in the private practice still, and even adopted my dog, uh, who has since passed on uh, from Chicago Animal Care and Control. And as a volunteer, I got to learn a lot about the facility and the department and what it does. And um, ironically, I ended up working as a city attorney in 2016, and Chicago Animal Care and Control became one of my client departments. So uh, after working with the department so closely on so many cases and matters, I ended up um, actually coming over to the department as deputy director and now executive director. Great. And Dr. Bathurst, how about you? A little bit about your background and the beginning of Safe Humane. Sure. Well, uh, I actually was a, a mathematician and a writer for a small mathematics consulting firm and got involved in in Chicago when CAPS, um, the community policing sure. program, just came out. And so I was really concerned with crime and violence and quality of life in neighborhoods. And one of the things was getting dog owners and non-dog owners uh, to get along together and share public spaces wisely. Um, so through a number of means, I started an organization and eventually became Safe Humane um, and also worked with 
criminal cases, um, and there was a lot of cruelty and neglect and dogfighting, and that's how I got started in that, became uh, part of some city council initiatives, and Safe Humane took off from that with programs that um, provide positive relationships for people and animals. Great. Um, Kelly, can you tell us a little bit about um, the purpose and function of Chicago Animal Care and Control, which is a department, uh, one of the city's many departments, is that right? That's right. We have a twofold purpose. It is to protect the public health and safety and also to provide for the safe and humane care and treatment of the animals in our charge. Mm -hmm. And um, in, in general terms, I mean, there's, in some ways that sounds very simple, although we know it's not, and I know that there are a great variety of programs that the city handles itself and in conjunction with community partners. Um, what are some of the programs and means, which we can dig into in, in further detail uh, later, but just an overview of, of some of the services that, uh, and programs that the uh, city maintains? What makes the department interesting and unique is that we have a field operation, and we also have a shelter operation, and we also have volunteers that come to the shelter and community partners and rescue groups. So we deal with um, all different aspects of animal care. The field officers are responsible for maintaining the public health and safety and responding to service calls. So for instance, we get everything from 911 assists where there could be um, a vicious dog attacking a person um, to simple wellness checks to make sure an animal hasn't been left outside in the cold for too long. Um, all of what we do is governed under the Chicago Municipal Code, Chapter 7-12. And so from there, we really do focus on what our mission is based on what the municipal code tells us it is. Um, and from a sheltering perspective, we take in uh, over 17,000 animals a year. And we are charged with taking in anything and everything that comes in. So from a dog or a cat to even an alligator. Sure. Um, if it Everyone comes, knows the story from the <laughs> summer. Sure. That's right. If it comes through our door, we have to take it. Mm -hmm. And so how do we manage to care for the animals in a way that the city wants us, the city as a whole wants us to care for the animals? Um, and so we can talk about where we've come um, as a community. And uh, we do rely upon our partnerships and volunteers to, in order to place the animals and provide very necessary programming for animals that have been treated very well in their homes to animals that have never known a home in their life to animals that were unfortunately the subject of horrible cruelty. Mm -hmm. So that those are the challenges for us. Sure. And how does, um, let's hear a little bit more about the background and beginning of Safe Humane and the way it's evolved in partnership with the city to help address some of these objectives. Well, probably the way to talk about it first is to talk about wanting to stop the violence against everyone, all beings, um, and to make our city a safer and therefore more humane, because if you have a humane community, it's more likely to be safe, and we wanted a safe uh, city. So what we did was started working with uh, court advocacy and trying to follow cases uh, to provide restorative justice for animals and their people in those communities. And so we were working with animal care and control, but we also then wanted to uh, deal directly with the animals and bring more people in to do that. So we started what we call a court case dog program, uh, which is the evidence animals. Um, but we call them court case dogs because they're not just evidence, they change over time. And we sure. were able to partner with that and do a number of court programs and working with those animals and bring people together mm -hmm. to make it better for everyone. So I want to explore, there's a lot there to unpack and there's just a couple things I want to follow up on which are um, one, and you gave a little bit of an insight into what a court case dog is, but I'd like you to, to tell us a little bit more about that. And then uh, there's a phrase you use or term restorative justice, which people are starting to become more familiar with and is working its way um, more deeply into the court system and particularly the juvenile justice court system, as far as I can tell. Can you tell us a little bit more about um, um, your role in that regard? And, and, and also, Kelly, to, you know, as in, in addition to being executive director, you're a lawyer, general counsel, and those roles don't always come together, but for you they are. And I think you might have some, some insight into, uh, particularly insight into those as well. So please. Well, I think that Kelly's, um, Kelly's past has really helped us. Um, because one of the things that Safe Humane does is run a group of court advocates through the community policing program, and we go to um, courtrooms all over the county and really collar counties. And what we do is stand up for prosecuting the law, but also 
trying to restore justice for the animals and the family and the communities. And that runs into dealing with a lot of issues uh, in the court system. And Kelly's been really important, and that's what helps make partnerships so vital. So we work with her staff uh, in order to get the cases moved forward. Safe, humane, even, because uh, government money is tight. Safe, humane, even pays for uh, forensic uh, evidence to be uh, developed with area colleges and veterinary diagnostic labs. Uh, we send court advocates to court, and then we help the dogs themselves. And that requires a lot of working and partnerships within that organization, ours, as well as the Chicago Police Department and the Cook County Circuit Court System. Sure. And in a moment, I want to hear more about that, Kelly, from your perspective. But, but uh, first, how, how does um, Safe Humane go about raising funds? Uh, we are largely funded by individual and business um, funds. We've had grants in the past, but not many. We have no government support, so it's largely... Financial support. Financial right. support, yes. Yeah. But the government support is huge in the relationships right. that we've developed. And if it weren't for all those relationships with the agencies mm -hmm. and the understanding of what we do and the professionalism of all the agencies, we wouldn't be able to do what we do, which is take animals from... Uh, that used to be there for 256 days on average to less than 40, mm -hmm. and where only 2% of them made it out alive for all kinds of reasons that could be unpacked. We're getting out over 95% of them and into homes and well treated. So it helps sure. the city's mission, it helps our communities, and we're also engaging people who need to re-enter the community. Education, advocacy, and second chances, that's what sure. we do. And the city affords us that opportunity Sure. The, the snag that used to occur with um, dogs that were, especially dogs, that were taken in as evidence for cruelty and neglect cases is that the dogs themselves used to really serve the time. Because what would happen is the city uh, department would impound them, and then they were not able to be touched other than to be fed or receive veterinary care. Um, they were not allowed to leave their kennels because they were being stored as evidence. But these are not widgets, these are not um, guns or knives or things that are uh, not living and breathing, these are dogs. And so I think the city recognized that was a big problem and then uh, Safe Humane certainly did. And so what Safe Humane has been instrumental in helping the city achieve is a way for us to create a system where we can still preserve the evidence of what happened to the animal but allow the animal to live its life in a healthier way. And so what we've done is we've developed a protocol where our in-house veterinarians and our staff um, know how to preserve that forensic evidence, so photographs, vet reports. And additionally, if there is um, a death, Safe Humane, the city of Chicago doesn't necessarily have the funding to pay for what they call a necropsy, sure. um, so a forensic diagnosis of, of why the animal has passed away. But Safe Humane, through its programming, does provide funding for that so we can preserve that evidence and then help seek justice on behalf of the animal. One of the very important things that Safe Humane does, um, not just for the court case dogs, but for all of our dogs in the shelter, is playgroup them. And it seems very intuitive, but it does take a special training to know how to bring a bunch of dogs from different backgrounds that you may not know where they've come from and put them together and let them exercise, breathe, and run. And what we've discovered through that process is it creates a healthier and saner environment for the animals in our charge. So um, for instance, a little bit of data, our uh, average length of stay has been reduced um, over the last year uh, with dogs. Um, it was 12 days, their length of stay on average in the shelter, and now it's down to 10 days. Um, for cats, it was eight days last year, and now it's down to six days. And I bet going back even further, we'll, we'll see that length of stay reduce. And so what you're noticing is that the animals are far more enriched now through programming that we have through our partnerships because um, staff is limited in their time to cleaning and caring and providing medical treatments to the animals. So these extra programs really do create um, a vital way for us to maintain a healthier population. Sure, so we're gonna wind up part one of the program with that and we're gonna come back for part two and explore um, more about Safe Humane and the other partners who are assisting you in your leadership improve these numbers everywhere, every year, thanks. When you need 
a lawyer, how do you find the right one? Contact the Chicago Bar Association. Whether you've been injured or need a will prepared, whether you're buying a home or starting a business, having the right lawyer is essential. The Chicago Bar Association have lawyers who practice in most areas of law and speak a variety of languages. Don't leave it to chance. Get a referral to a screened, experienced lawyer. Visit chicagobar.org or call 312-554-2001. The Chicago Bar Association. Se habla español. Welcome back to part two of this episode of You and the Law. We have Dr. Cynthia Bathurst and Kelly Gandersky here. And when we left off, um, at, at the end of uh, that last section, uh, we were just about to get into um, other community partners who have been instrumental along with Kelly, your leadership in advancing the mission of animal care and control. Um, in addition to Safe Humane, what are some of the other organizations and community um, sources of community support that, that, that you've been relying on? Well, we have over 200 rescue partners that serve just to try to um, take animals from Chicago Animal Care and Control and all kinds of animals, not just dogs and cats, into their rescue groups and then either rehabilitate them if needed, medically or behaviorally, um, and place them into loving forever homes. Um, obviously, you know, Chicago is a very large city, um, but it has its limitations and obviously the city can, can get saturated. Um, in a city where we're taking in, you know, 14,800 dogs and cats a year, um, there are only so many homes to place them in, in the city proper. Especially our biggest challenge is our, lar our large dogs. Um, in an urban setting, it's difficult to place larger dogs, but there are a lot of issues with landlords and tenants. Um, mm -hmm. That's a whole other social issue we can discuss. Sure. Um, and there's a variety of reasons why people can't take these animals in. So um, what we've seen over the last probably 10 years, Mike, is uh, when the answer used to be euthanasia, if, if space were an issue, we've seen a community ethos that that's really no longer an option. The community doesn't want to see good animals um, be put down for, for no reason. Sure. Uh, so what we've done is we have to work harder, and we have to work smarter, and we have to work together. So in order to do that, we need to maintain a healthier population, so Safe Humane helps us do that through their programming. Um, we have large uh, donor partners such as Friends of Chicago Animal Care and Control that provides necessary equipment and program funding we need for the things the city budget cannot cover. Um, Paws Chicago is one of our largest rescue partners and they take in thousands of animals from us a year. Um, Anti-Cruelty is a great partner of ours as well and we've got more partners that are also becoming stray hold facilities. So we are a legal stray hold facility meaning if a stray comes in we have an obligation under the city ordinance to hold that dog or cat, if it's unchipped, untagged, for at least three days, if it's chipped or tagged, seven days, and notify the owner. We have other stray hold facilities now that we partner with that are helping us hold animals so that we can make more room and we can move animals out more expeditiously. One of the other things that we've had to do is get more creative. We've uh, developed a, a foster program of our own and we've developed um, what's called Doggy Day Out. So now any resident of Illinois can come in and reserve their time to take a dog on a field trip for the day. So that's a new program. It's a new program. And, and you smiled because it sounds like you're excited about this or <laughs> yes. for some other reason yes. I'm speculating. Yes. I'm going to let Cynthia exactly. talk about sure. why it's so important for the animals to get out of the shelter, even if it's for uh, just a few hours. Sure. Yeah, in fact, I, I, I smile because until this program, this was almost the only quality of life program or series of programs that Animal Care and Control had to help the dogs while they're there. So many excellent partners are getting dogs and cats out. What we're doing is providing programs with people who need work and special opportunities sure. um, to work with those animals and give them a good quality of life while they're in there. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why it's so important because they do better, they show better, they place better, they, there's less stress, therefore they're healthier. Sure. And one of the more important things we've done as well is it's it's not just the animal focus, it's the human focus as well. So Cynthia's group, Safe Humane Chicago, has really been instrumental in helping what we call reentry. Um, individuals who may have been incarcerated, they're coming back into society, or they may have been part of a drug and alcohol substance abuse program, again, coming back into society, 
Um, these individuals may have never experienced the love of an animal or the responsibility of an animal or even have had a job before in their lives. Mm -hmm. um, these are individuals now in their mid-20s. So how do we as a society help them enter and become good productive members of society? And one of the ways we do that is through our programming with Safe Humane. And I'll let Cynthia talk about that. And what that program does is it takes these uh, young men. We have a there's a program that the city has with mm -hmm. Westside Health Authority. We take those those adults and they give up their breaks in order to work with us and learn about dog body language, how to treat the dogs, how to train them well, um, and also then they learn what dogs are about. It helps with fears. It helps with getting rid of a lot of the stereotypes and discrimination of people and animals. Um, and they get certificates, and eventually uh, we've even placed some of them in some of our partners. Um, mm -hmm. And we partner with a lot of animal rescue groups to get them jobs when they get out. So that sure. program is great, in addition to a program that we do with the Illinois Youth Centers, mm -hmm. um, both in Chicago and St. Charles, where they go through 10 weeks of classes, but we bring those young men to animal care and control, introduce them to the city shelter and what's required and what the issues are with animals and get them connected and then offer them internships. Oh, that's great. So it's really um, very layered and, 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 and with um, there are multiple objectives kind of being served that each help you know, what's, the other, it sounds like. So, yes, what's yeah. so great is that Safe Humane is, is unique in that we're looking at both the people and the animals sure. and the dogs. And then we partner with the many great rescues that yeah. Kelly mentioned uh, in order to get the court case dogs placed, in order to get them connected with the young people or young adults. Um, so we're actually working with collaboration and partnerships ourselves. So while we may not rescue the dogs ourselves in that sense, we rescue the dogs and the people. We we kind of seem like, think we're a community rescue. Group. Sure, absolutely. Um, I want to take a step back to, to, to what may in some ways be just the, almost the most fundamental role of animal care and control, although I suppose it can be looked at a number of different ways. But one thing certainly is um, placing dogs in uh, what are lovingly referred to as forever homes. Is that right? Well, that's right, yeah. Okay, so... Um, and cats. You know, and, and cats, I'm sorry, yeah. I, I'm always partial to dogs. There are plenty yes. of cats. I have a <laughs> slight cat allergy, but cats are great, too, in any event. So there are plenty of cats, too. And um, I, I, I want to um, follow up on a concept of, you know, there's the concept out there of adopt, don't shop, right? And this speaks really directly to, um, you know, part of the challenges that you are attempting to, that you are addressing, not attempting to, but successfully addressing. Um, what, what steps are there? I'll ask this two ways. You can, and you can. But what steps are there? First of all, for someone to to get a dog from you, or a cat, or an animal of any kind that's legal, no gators, okay. And um, and what do the, what what do they need to know in very simple terms in order to be to be ready to take on that real responsibility? Right. So we want you to come in to the shelter, and we want you to really take a look around and um, have a chance to interact with a dog or a cat. What I mean, understand what you're looking for and do your research first about the responsibility. I think that's where it starts. Um, our volunteers are instrumental in helping us pair the right fit for your home. I think the best thing you can do when you come in is have an open mind. Often we get people that come in and say, I, I saw the picture of you know Fido, number one, two, three, four, sure. and that's the dog that's for me, and I know that's for me, and all they've seen is a picture. Sure. But what they may not be looking at is maybe Fido isn't a best fit if you have another animal at home or if you have children or if you live in um, you know, a high-rise building as opposed to a home. Um, so you know, all of these things we have to look at. Um, have an open mind, have, be open to having a dialogue with our volunteers and our staff about what the responsibility is going to be and how that particular dog has done in the shelter. We don't know much about the dogs outside of the shelter unless they can do the doggy day out um, you know, cats are also very stressed out. It's a stressful environment. So understand that when you bring this animal home, there is a decompression period, and you have to give that dog or cat a chance to understand this is their new environment and to be safe and comfortable there. Sure. Um, essentially, we just ask people to fill out an application, bring some forms of ID. Um, if you have, if you're renting, bring a letter from your landlord. Lord, have that open discussion first about what you're looking to do. Um, get permission from your landlord 
so that way you're not bringing a dog home, surprising your landlord with it, and your landlord saying, "Well, I thought you were going to have a dog this big, sure. and that dog's 50 pounds. That's not what I'm, you know, okay with." Um, so have reasonable expectations and just be responsible on the front end so that way on the back end you just have an easier experience. Sure. Uh, Cynthia, I'd like to follow up on one particular program, the, uh, the Valor program or the Veterans, Advan uh, Veterans Advancing Lives of Rescues program that may be of particular interest to folks. Uh, it's a wonderful program where it currently uh, we have a hiatus in the actual programming at the shelter because we always make sure, and that's one of the things Safe Humane does, <coughs> make sure that we have the social and health services available to the participants who are humans. Sure. And so um, we had been working with Jesse Brown VA and expect at some point, we hope, to be able to pull that again. But, mm -hmm. in, a, but in any case, we've had a lot of graduates uh, and we help the veterans with their dogs, but they come in and basically what they say is, you come, you come to a program, you sit in the auditorium at Animal Care and Control, you meet the animals who've been through all sorts of trauma. Mm -hmm. We've been through trauma. We forget about our trauma. We help them, they get homes, what could be better? Right. This is why you see the Who Saved Who paw bumper stickers, right? Yes, <laughs> All right. that's exactly sure. right. Sure. Um, so for anyone who is interested in either volunteering um, with either of your organizations or um, working with you to foster or adopt, what's the best way for them to get involved in some capacity? For us, look at our website, um, chicago.gov backslash CACC. We have different tabs for volunteering, fostering. Um, for those interested in fostering or doing the Doggy Day Out program, um, you can email cccfoster at cityofchicago.org. Great. How and for Safe Humane, you can go to our website, safehumanechicago.org. We're also on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, and uh, check it out. There are tabs for volunteers. We'd love to have you if you love dogs, if you love kids, if you love helping people get reconnected in the community. You can find sure. out that information. And um, we're, we're just about out of time, but before we are, what are, you know, we're toward the end of the year here, what are the goals that you have for your organizations, the, like the overarching really goal with, with, uh, for, the, for 2020, and, and how are you going to work together? to achieve those goals. My goal, and I've made no secret of it, is for CACC to really be less of a pound and more of a community resource center. So we'd like eventually to see um, less of a population, everybody keeping their animals in their homes, and us being used as a community resource for vetting, training, um, food, you know, toys, leashes, collars, those kinds of things. Um, anything that would help keep the animals in their home, that's what we want to become as opposed to uh, a place just to store animals and for people to drop off animals, we'd like them to be able to keep their animals in their home. And we want to remove the barriers um, that make it harder for people to do that. Sure, thank you. Like and yourself. Safe Humane really wants to, in 2020, we've been reorganizing a little bit because we want to do more for the court case dogs and all the dogs at Animal Care and Control by way of engaging more people from the community, helping more people re-enter the community from places that they need help with and so we want to develop the money that we can that, because we depend on individual donations um, to grow those programs and make them more viable and uh, help Chicago even more. Great. Well, Cynthia Kelly, uh, thanks very much for participating in, the, uh, participating in the program today and as always we'd like to thank our viewers out there. Thanks for watching this episode of You in the Law.